did all these Pokemon come from? What is this one even supposed to be? An ice cream cone? A gerbil trapped inside a balloon? Actually make it the great game that it is. Here's a Hello? Hey Jamin, it's Joe from It's Okay to Be Smart. Oh hey. It's funny that you called. I was just uh I was just thinking, why are there so many Pokemon? There's like 721. Well, that's kind of a funny question to ask somebody out of nowhere, but imagine you were a biologist. There's more than 1.7 million species of animals on Earth, and that's just the ones we know about. Maybe a better question is why are there so many animals? Huh. I gotta go. I got an idea. For today's episode, we decided to get out of the studio and voyage around the world to Pokemon Snap Island. Now, look, this may sound crazy, but what if the reason there's so many Pokemon is for biodiversity? I think that just as a huge variety of different organisms is necessary to sustain healthy ecosystems on Earth, all those minor Pokemon who seem to just exist for you to check off a box on your Pokedex are an invaluable part of the Pokemon universe. So why is biodiversity important for Pikachu and Pals? Let's look for some Pokemon. Pokemon and find out. Ooh, we're in luck. There's a Jigglypuff. Now the gastronomy of Pokemon is not discussed very much, but we do know that Jigglypuff loves to eat berries and fruit. But to produce that fruit, it takes a big group effort among many other Pokemon. For there to be fruit, first we need trees. And for trees to grow, we need species of Pokemon who act as agents for dispersing the seeds. In botany, this is known as Zookery, because animals do the work, as opposed to wind or water. I see friends shaking hands. What a wonderful world. Some seeds are sown by air. Bird Pokemon like Tailo or Chadot would do this by swallowing the seeds wholesale, letting them germinate in their digestive tract and relieving themselves elsewhere. And of course, there's larger herbivores like Mewtwo who would eat the fruit wholesale and then poop out the seeds. I know you've never thought about Mewtwo pooping, but I assure you it's an incredibly important part of the Pokemon ecosystem. So the seeds grow into a tree, but most trees don't self-pollinate. For that, we need pollinator Pokemon to convey pollen from the male anthors of a flower to the female male stigma, and Pokemon is swarming with pollinators. For instance, all those bug type Pokemon. Speaking of which, hold on one second, I see a Krigaton. With pollinators, you have the obvious suspects, like the butterfly Butterfree. There's the poisonous moth Dustox and Beedrill, who's either a bee or a wasp, but it doesn't really matter because they both pollinate. Even some you might not expect to do it, like Deden, who's a mouse. Only after everyone is involved does Jigglypuff finally get to munch on those tasty Oron berries. That's one reason biodiversity is super important in the real world and in Pokemon. It creates renewable resources, like a natural food source, and this ties in with the second reason that biodiversity is so important, which is that it regulates the environment. Forests where wolves have been killed off, for instance, have six times as many herbivores, which cripples the growth of plant life and puts all those helpful birds and insects that do the seeding and pollinating out of work. Now, Pokemon don't feast on the flesh of other Pokemon, as far as we know, but they do frequently battle with one another. Pokemon are classified by their types, such as fire, rock, or psychic. And in battle, this determines which rivals they're strong against. Hold one second, there's a Pichu in that bush. Pichu is an electric type. That means they're an excellent choice when fighting against water type Pokemon like Psyduck and flying types like Murkrow because they do twice the damage. However, they're a poor choice against Cherubi, a grass type, Dratini, a dragon type, and Pachirisu, an electric type because they only do half. And this balance between superiority and submission serves to keep the fighting system fair so that one type isn't too powerful and kills off another type. Unless there's a Honey Badger Pokemon, in which case, you know the rest. Look, a snake's up in the tree. Honey Badger don't care. But I hear you out there. Isn't 150 Pokemon enough for a fair fight and a tip-top ecosystem? Do we really need a Candelabra Pokemon or a Cotton Candy Pokemon and a Pokemon that's, what is that? It's a pair of keys? Well, maybe not if you wanna be super economical about it, but there's another reason that biodiversity is needed, and that's because animals have cultural significance. Just as the buffalo were sacred to the Lakota Sioux Indians and monkeys were often depicted in ancient Japanese artworks and shrines, Pokemon are an inseparable part of culture, inside the game and out. It's not just about the fighting. Pokemon is about the collecting and the trading and the back and forth on the message boards and dressing your Pokemon in bonnets and bow ties and entering them in beauty contests, which is adorable. Hang on, it's gotta be fun. 
Pokemon Snap, take your best shot. New Pokemon expand the cultural canon and give new players new Pokemon to fall in love with. So the next time you're scratching your head at the latest Pokemon, remember that each strange new psychic slug tells you something about the nature of nature in Pokemon. As designer Richard Garfield has written about Magic the Gathering, players are exploring a world rather than knowing all the details to start. Discovering the cards and what they do is integral. The only difference is that in Pokemon, you're discovering a rich and flourishing ecosystem that incidentally also teaches you about biodiversity in our world. How convenient. So hopefully we'll continue to see the downpour, though they're going to have to drop the gotta catch them all slogan at some point because there's only so much room on Pokemon Island. What do you think? Is biodiversity the reason that there's so many Pokemon or has the universe become so bloated that they're going to have to retire someone soon? I would suggest Mr. Mime. Hash it out in the comments and if you like what you saw, please subscribe. I'll see you next week. Rainforest only covers 6% of Earth's land area that they contain so many different species. Ecologists think that ecosystems where species can serve redundant roles, well, it might help those ecosystems be insulated from things like climate change. It's kind of like an insurance policy. Jamin? Jamin, are you there? How rude. Wait, why did I call him again?